what's good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 heel turns that uh vitally saved a wwe wrestler's career man heel turns are one of the pivotal points for a lot of wrestlers once they turn heel for a lot of times in a lot of situations it's like they they start to become more cool more charismatic like i've had this discussion with dub people love it people love to see people go rogue people love to see the dark side of like that person i don't know why maybe that's the state of how we operate as you know as human beings but we love to see we love a good villain you see it all the time and it's definitely prevalent in in wrestling for sure like seeing someone that's always a goody two shoes it kind of gets boring it kind of gets you know redundant but when you see someone that's like kind of an asshole they kind of do things that you know it's not i guess you can say conventionally good people for whatever reason like it and relate i can name a few wrestlers um when uh hbk Shawn michaels decided to go heel uh you can say the same thing with the rock when he decided to go heel um definitely with hulk hogan when he went heel it was insane no one no one could believe it but it worked and the most recent one when roman reigns went heel it made it took him to the next level because now we can see him actually just not give a f and go crazy go rogue you know so this should be a great video appreciate all the love and support Road to 90k, let's do this thing, this should be great. Despite initial success, sometimes a babyface's persona can become stale and they're left like with no choice saying. but to turn heel. Yep. This heel turn usually gives their character a new lease of life and the wrestler will then embark on the best run of their entire career. Facts. But which wrestlers were they? Well join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestler heel turns that saved a career. It's like something about being bad that people love. They love it. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk. Y'all go subscribe to WrestleMania Incredible. if you haven't already. Number 10, Batista. Mm. By the time Batista made his return from injury in 2009, his babyface character was insanely stale. Mm -hmm. Batista had been a babyface since 2005 and something needed to change. His popularity was dwindling and if something wasn't done, his star power would have seriously diminished. WWE made the right call to turn Batista heel and they were going to do this at the Bragging Rights pay-per-view in 2009. Batista would turn on his close friend Rey Mysterio and this Which is, that was a good storyline. I love that. That was actually pretty good. I was like, okay. Rey will always be like this ultimate underdog babyface so you can't really turn him heel. You can try, but he'll always be the underdog babyface. Batista, though, it, it made sense to turn him heel at that time. This heel turn injected new energy into the former WWE champion. But Batista's character work was exceptional, mm -hmm. and although his heel run would just last eight months, it was truly some of the best work of his entire career. Definitely. Batista seemingly overnight became fantastic on the mic, and his mannerisms and body language took the new villainous persona to a whole new level. And that's what I love. When a character turns heel, they, it's like they get to be like more themselves like they're able to open up they don't have to confine to being all cookie cutter great and wholesome no they can just say screw it bro i don't give a damn what you think i don't give a damn what anybody thinks i'm here to kick ass take names and win championships i love that number nine neville this neville was really good had for a him reputation too for being one of the best in-ring talents in the industry but there was always something missing Neville character. was never going to receive a substantial push in WWE because he lacked character and fans struggled to take him seriously as a threat. Yep. This all changed when WWE made the decision to turn him heel at the end of 2016. His character would turn a complete 180 and he would enter into the cruiserweight division. This character change was phenomenal. It was and great. It gave Neville that edge that had been missing. Neville had a great presence on screen as a heel and fans were so impressed with the new character that they wanted him to push him into the main event scene. Although he would leave the WWE in 2017, he would eventually sign with AEW, where he kept the majority of the character traits mm -hmm. that he initially debuted during his WWE heel Which turn. worked for him. Number 8, Daniel Bryan. This was a good one as well. Him turning heel, it worked. Because for the longest we hadn't seen him wrestle, he couldn't wrestle, he was finally able to wrestle. The yes movement wasn't as strong as it once be was before. 
So it's like, let's turn them heel. And it worked. It was, it was, oh, it was, it was, it was great, man. A former WWE champion, Daniel Bryan, is widely regarded as being one of the most popular stars to ever step foot in a Big WWE facts. ring. However, in 2018, it was clear that the Yes Movement character had become stale and Bryan needed to try something new. Whilst the fans hadn't officially turned on Bryan, the reactions were getting weaker and weaker. Yeah, they were. And it was apparent that if Bryan wanted to maintain his main event position, he was going to have to evolve. Brian would turn heel during a WWE this title This was such match a shocking moment, too. Smackdown, and Brian would cheat to win the title yep. in a move that nobody saw coming. Nobody Brian saw it coming. Brian would then debut a brand new heel character to go along with his title reign, and he would preach about the environment, and he would belittle fans for their part in destroying the earth. This was a bold character, but it was genius, and it could be argued that this was the finest work of Brian's entire career. It was great. Career. I miss it. Brian would also take part in a memorable storyline with Kofi Kingston, mm -hmm. which saw Brian help Kofi reach to the top of the WWE. Number seven, Edge. But during Edge's early oh yeah, Edge, one of the best heels ever. Early days in WWE, he was always a solid mid carder, but he mm -hmm. lacked something that made fans question if he was a true main event talent. Mm -hmm. In 2004, Edge's babyface character was incredibly dull, and fans were yeah. rather bored of the generic happy-go-lucky babyface. Yeah, it didn't that work. Didn't fit in with the ruthless aggression era. A heel turn would come when Edge became obsessed with winning the world title, and when fans didn't choose him to face world champion Triple H at Taboo Tuesday, he officially snapped. I thought he left the building! Oh, I love it. I love it. Edge entered into a feud with the legendary Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. and this propelled him to the next level. His heel turn had logic, and there was genuine motivation behind his shift in motives. Oh. Thankfully, this is where Edge began to come into his own in WWE. Oh my over God. the next few months, he would transition Easily into an one of the best heels heel character. Ever. And it wouldn't be too long before Edge would win his first ever WWE title. Number six, Hulk Hogan. I called it. I called it when he turned into Hollywood Hogan, bro. It was fantastic. WCW was that show to watch because people got tired of the say your prayers brother they got tired of it as you would they wanted to see something different and some people were legit hurt some fans were legit pissed that he went evil and it was the best thing that ever happened to him and was the best thing damn near that ever happened to wrestling in 1996, wrestling fans were growing tired of family-friendly, cartoonish mm -hmm. wrestling, and they cried out for something more. WCW were ahead of the game in realizing this, and they decided to turn the beloved Hulk Hogan heel. Hogan's character had become rather dated, and as the wrestling world entered a new era, the red and yellow had to go. Hogan would turn heel at the Bash at the Beach pay-per-view in 96, and he would form the NWO alongside Kevin Ash and oh, Scott Hall. This heel turn took WCW easily one of the greatest factions, if not the greatest faction of all time. W to new heights, and it gave Hogan arguably the most entertaining run of his entire career. Facts. It without a doubt kept Hogan's popularity alive through the 90s, and if this heel turn didn't happen, it would have been rather interesting to see what would have happened to Hogan's one illustrious star power and it's crazy people hated hogan i'm talking about people legit hated hogan when he first turned heel and then people started loving him as the months went by the weeks and months went by people couldn't get enough of hollywood hulk hogan number five bradshaw oh Following yeah WrestleMania 20 wwe were low on star power brock lesnar and goldberg had just <laughs> exited the company and mm -hmm. they needed to make new stars rather quickly WWE came up with the idea of turning APA member Bradshaw into a main eventer. Which they did. He transitioned into John Bradshaw Layfield, and he would debut a brand new heel character. Which worked. There was a ton of skepticism surrounding this at the time, as fans questioned if Bradshaw could pull it off. Oh, he did, Thanks to bro. strong booking and unbelievable commitment to the character, it couldn't have worked any better. Oh, he killed he it. He into a feud with Eddie Guerrero for the title, Listen, and the Eddie. character work from both men was on point. And it made fans take JBL seriously mm -hmm. as a legitimate main event attraction. Number four, Chris Jericho. But when Chris Jericho returned to the WWE in 2007, something fell off. Yep. Jericho's character wasn't hitting the mark, and it was obvious to fans as well as Jericho himself that a character change was needed. Jericho would turn heel and enter into a easily one of my favorite views. Jericho, HPK. Oh my God, one of my favorite views of all time. Love this feud, bro. Feud with Shawn Michaels, but along with his heel turn came a brand new version of Jericho. He began to wear suits and he would cut long-winded promos where he belittled the fans and stated that he believed that he was the best in the world. 
Jericho's heel character was so good that he actually had people attacking him on the street because he was able wow. to get under people's skin. The heel character was acclaimed by fans and is often regarded as the most compelling work of his entire career. Facts. Number three, Bailey. A ba Bailey. I know I keep pausing, but I have to interject my commentary within these vids, man. When Bailey turned heel, it oh, all the fans just had a sigh of relief. Because Bailey has always been the goody two shoes and do the right thing. And then fans got tired of it. When she turned heel, Chef's Kiss. It it, it was it was beautiful. And uh, there's a report saying that she may be coming back at this year's SummerSlam. So we will see if she does make a return. She needs to be a heel if she makes a return, for sure. Bailey's hugger character was beloved by fans in NXT, but when she debuted on the main roster with the character, it grew tiresome very quickly. Therefore, in 2019, she decided to pitch a heel turn. Bailey knew that a heel turn was needed as she couldn't do the same character forever. Bailey would destroy the Bailey buddies and would even cut her ponytail off, showing fans that the old Bailey was officially dead. I loved it. As part of this new heel persona, she would join forces with Sasha Banks, and the heel work from both women was top tier. Bailey would explain the heel turn during an interview with Fox 5 Atlanta and the reason behind the heel turn. She stated, Nothing's changed. I know a lot of people are asking about my actions lately, but do you have a best friend? And would you do anything for your best friend? That's what I've been doing. Sasha Banks is literally my best friend, the best person I've ever met in my whole life, and I would do anything for her. And if anybody has a problem with her, I just have to be there for her and be by her side. And that's all I'm doing. I'm a champion. Kids look up to me. I'm a role model. Love it. Love it. Alien Banks has worked together pretty much carried WWE throughout the pandemic. Yes, it did. It was a tough task when the WWE superstars were performing in front of zero fans on a weekly basis. During this heel run, Bailey seemingly put it all together in the ring. She became a locker room leader and a ring general, and there are calls from fans for Bailey to keep the heel character indefinitely. Facts. Number two, The Rock. Of course, The Rock has to be on here. The Rock, as his earlier gimmick, Rocky Maivia, I believe that's what it was. It, it, it wasn't working. It just wasn't. But when he created The Rock persona, oh, took him to the moon, bro. It, it instantly skyrocketed him. People love to hate him, but then people love to cheer him. Oh, Initially, man. The Rock was pushed as a generic babyface, but this was met with universal hatred from the audience. Yep. So much so that The Rock actually received a Die Rocky Die chance directed towards yep. him. But this all changed when The Rock turned heel and joined the Nation of Domination. This allowed The Rock to let out his natural charisma and actually oh, deliver so compelling good, character bro. work. This took The Rock to the next level. Yeah, Fans no, began to rally doubt. behind this. WWE quickly realized they had an absolute megastar on their hands, and by the summer of 1999, The Rock's popularity had skyrocketed. Oh, man. So much so that The Rock was on the level of Stone Cold Steve Austin Facts. in terms of crowd reactions. <laughs> it was a great call from WWE to align The Rock with the nation way mm -hmm. back in 97. And if this never happened, it's a distinct possibility that WWE would have never discovered just how great of a talent they had. And number one, Roman Reigns. It only makes sense Roman's on this list. And I think... Him being on this list at number one. Someone could say you could put Rock at number one. But I think what makes this so impactful is the fact that for about, I don't know how many years. It was about a good four or five years. Vince McMahon would not turn him heel. The fans were booing him out of every single, single arena. Because we did not want this baby face Roman. We just couldn't stand it. We could see right through it. Hell, he when he announced he had um um he was dealing with leukemia. And you know, fans were sympathetic. Watched that episode, very emotional. He came back, he had some pops, he had some cheers. But it didn't take maybe about two weeks, them cheers started turning into booze after he came back from uh leukemia. He was in remission. So, at that point, people was like, yeah, we're, we're over this. It's the same thing. It wasn't until he came back at SummerSlam during the pandemic and everything changed. And what we've been wanting for five years finally happened. Oh, man.
The WWE's decision to make Roman Reigns the face of the entire company was met with disdain from fans. A lot fans of disdain. Fans received less than warm reactions from the audience for years, and the main reason for this was that the character felt forced and unnatural. Facts. However, in 2020, WWE did the unthinkable. They would turn Reigns heel. Returning at SummerSlam, Reigns would debut a brand new villainous persona. I that love it. No prisoners. Reigns would align with Paul Heyman, and the character work on offer was the best work of his career. No, without would a doubt. Reigns also have an association with the Usos, and the trio would form the Bloodline. Reigns would also embark on the longest Universal title reign in company history, and his heel run was so appreciated by fans that it simply made them ask one simple question. Why did WWE wait so long to turn Reigns heel? But there you have it, folks. Imagine if they would have turned him heel all those years ago. Oh. My. God, bro. Imagine, imagine you have a heel Roman Reigns going in on Brock Lesnar. Like, he can't get the job done. He attacks him with all types of weapons. Imagine you have him just going in on any baby face, attacking whoever he wants to attack. Uh, just imagine it. Oh, my gosh. Him delivering the promos he's delivering now. Oh, Imagine if he was the one. I mean, yeah. If say, Bro uh, Brock never beat Ro uh, the Undertaker at um, at WrestleMania. Imagine if he was the one to do it. Imagine they built that up. Roman goes heel, and his mission is to retire the Undertaker. Imagine if he was the one to do it. Do you understand the nuclear heat he would get? And it will be beautiful. He will be a made star. I mean, granted, it happened. He's a made star now. But I'm just saying. They had so many opportunities to do it. And they didn't do it. But now they have. So I am okay with what they've done. I just wish he was on the show more. That's it. But uh, comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite baby face turned into a heel. My favorite it's between, it's definitely between The Rock and Roman Reigns. Reason why for The Rock is because it it made him who he is. And for Roman Reigns, I just got tired of seeing the babyface character when he became heel. Y'all remember how I was talking about how much I was loving SmackDown, how much I was loving almost every pay-per-view, like the ending of the pay-per-view because of Roman. He carried the WWE on his back. For the pandemic era, bro. He carried it. Oh, my God. He made SmackDown what it was. It's not the same now. But he definitely was a very good integral part to where SmackDown was when he was prime in his heel run. So, But I appreciate all the love and support all you guys have been showing on the channel. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.